Hello and uh, welcome back. Uh, today I have uh, an EEPROM programmer because, uh, yeah, a week ago or two weeks ago, I had a video about the IC tester. That's the, this little device. And uh, it worked very nicely, uh, I think. Uh, I was surprised by the, by the easy use of it. Uh, only I would have liked the up and down button the other way around, but well, you can watch my, my video. But there was more than one uh, person that uh, actually uh, notified me and said, well, listen, that is a nice thing you have there, but <laughs> but uh, most of them have this EEPROM programmer and it is the, the TL8662 and this is the plus version, it has some extra adapters. and it should be able to test a lot better ICs. Well, and on top of that, of course, it can also program EEPROMs. And uh, let me be honest with you, programming EEPROMs, I maybe have done 25 years ago to, for a little project. And I did it at school. We needed to build uh, uh, with a lot of, uh, well, a lot of uh, Antenor ports. We need to build something and uh, yeah, for me it was kind of simple, so I thought, ah, oh, yeah, I just uh, burn it into an EEPROM. I just think of it as a black box. What you put in needs to go out, and instead of using six ICs, I just use one EEPROM. Of course, I got an F, or I don't know, in the Netherlands it's one to ten, so I probably got a five or six, and I didn't like it. So, but, well, it was very. Uh, I learned a lot from that, so that uh, that was nice. So. Maybe I still have those EEPROMs because I have a lot of uh, all my components still. So let's see. Um, I will be installing the software and explaining how to upgrade, uh, upgrade the firmware because there are a lot of versions available and they say it's version 10 or it's version 10.17. This one is version 10.33. Uh, but I already saw on the website the way you download the official software the oh it should be somewhere here yeah it is uh, xgsu.com uh, but i will put the zip with the manual and everything of course in my in my description so you can download it there but the version is already 10.8 uh, um yeah and, and uh, <laughs> explain before with my voucher video before it can do so many Windows versions. It, it even didn't fit on the on the box, so they really continue here on the inside. What I thought, making the box a lot smaller would probably save them cost in shipping, so they are right in that sense. And uh, well, let's have a closer look and pack the whole thing. We have the box. Uh, it's very compact. And uh, well, this was the C tester. Let's move that. Let's open. Let's have a look. It does feel heavy. I like that, but maybe they just put a metal plate that it just feels good because of that. And what else is in there? Probably it's. Um, Quality control, I thank you for buying. It does come with a proper USB cable with something to kill the distortion. That is good. They ask you to please use the proper cable, and we will. And well, this is just now the I think the TL8662 and the plus comes with this. So it is a component grabber. I think you can pull your ICs out. Well, I'm not sure I'm going to use that. This is something maybe you can program some serial stuff. There is a plug right here. I need to read what that is. And we have some stuff left. 
Okay, this looks like I'm just uh, dipping my sandwich. And, but it does have all the adopters as promised. So I like that. It's a promise. Yes. It does have a lot of adopters. Okay, look at this. You can see here for what components it is used. And you probably need to put it in and close it. Cool. That is one. Another one here. Also, it says what to use it for. Yeah, I can. I'm supposed to put an SMD on this thing, I think. I don't know how that will work in practice, but at least they send it. I will keep it in this foam, I think. This is really something that got lost. What I have here. Another thing. Here I can probably put also some serial cable like thing. And there are some more. I have no clue what to use it for, but of course if I can choose between a normal version and a plus version and uh, by price is not the difference, I will go for a plus. Because nothing is worse than to find out later that you needed to spend two dollars more. And you need to buy the whole thing again. So I will throw all these things. And let's go back to installing. Well, I will install this time with the screen recorder. It will be my first time doing that. And, but the, probably the quality of the screen will be a lot better. So uh, I will start with that. Okay, I uh, downloaded the zip file. I also put, uh, will put this one in the description of this video. And uh, it's just one zip, so we just need to uh, unpack that. We get the warning that it's insecure. So, um, we're just going to unpack it and just move it down. After the copy is done, I can close the zip file and we can just focus on what is in the folder. In the folder, many files. There is a short uh, instruction how to do this, but I will just uh, show you how to do that. It is in English, so that is maybe also useful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they go to the procedure here, and there is a component list that it is compatible with, and it is a lot. Let me tell you, look at this. Okay, we continue the install. I did not plug in yet the programmer because that is not what you should do. Um, first you install so it can install the driver and that is what we are going to do now. So I just run the setup. As you can see this is already version uh, 10.8 and I bought it with 10.33 but uh, yeah, you can just, it is just a version of the firmware, and the firmware is uh, into the software itself. So if you have an older model, you think I have an old one because I still have 9.6. Don't worry, download the software, install it, and you can later just uh, update it. Um, I don't want to put it on my D drive, to be honest. Yeah, why not? We're just gonna let it unpack and it will probably ask us if we want to install the driver first which uh, then we're gonna do before we plug it in because we want to be sure windows is really detecting the correct version so we just need to wait for this a bit
Okay, welcome to the driver, device driver installation. As I mentioned before, we did not plug the programmer in yet. We don't do that, we just wait. First, okay, yeah, this is uh, do you trust the driver? Yes, we probably need to. Uh, I have ESET installed on my computer, so I'm not too much worried. It did install the driver, so we are good, I think. Now, what it will do now? Oh. I have an icon already on my desktop. Which one we have? Programmer not find. Okay, perfect. Now we're gonna connect it. I close the software and I will connect it. So I have the programmer. I use the USB cable that uh, was supplied with it and I will now plug it in and hopefully Windows will start to recognize everything. Let me just try. Yes, I hear that noise. And yes, the, the light is now, uh, the power light of the programmer is now uh, not blinking, it is fully red. Maybe I can make a little picture of that. Now we're gonna start the, the program. And now it did not complain, I cannot see the programmer and also when I open it I saw a little flash of the, of the LEDs and uh, yeah, so this is the latest version and I think what we should do now is first upgrade the firmware and let me just get it a little bit better in the screen so, uh, so what we need to do first, we go to tools and yeah, you should say refresh the software, but it does not do that. So probably mine is not the 1033, but it is already the 10.8. But just let's do a self-test. Please remove the IC. Yes, there is no IC on the socket. Test. Everything is okay. No. That is good. But now I'm still wondering, can I see somewhere what firmware I'm running? Because this option should be available. Okay, I, I can't seem to find the firmware version, but uh, because uh, I don't see the option uh, light and it is probably the latest version, so I'm not going to worry about it. Okay, it is all connected. I have here an IC, the 4051, and we're gonna test that. I'm gonna go back to the screen recorder and you can have a look with me too. Okay, we just have this uh, 4051 and just let's pick it from the list. That already goes a lot smoother than with your buttons. And here we can see already, we need to put it in the top. So I'm gonna do exactly that and I'm gonna close it and I'm gonna do a test and it fails that is funny because I picked the 53 it was a 51 test yeah and now it's all good but it can also do an auto find so I just click the wrong one I'm just gonna click nothing and I'm gonna do an auto find and let's see this is great it finds a 4051 so that is a lot better already than the uh, than in the other one so as an ic tester that uh, works very nicely it immediately even at the auto detect setting that that was amazing so i like it already and now going back to my eproms as i said for me it was years and years and years ago so I have here very old ones, and in that time it was very normal. It's the 2764, and a lot of them are hopefully empty. I'm still waiting for my eraser. It will come next week. 
but I have something here, and this could be my school project because it says E3 to BCD. I have no clue what it was in here. I have the other way around. So apparently it says bit five is reversed. Well, anyway, I did this a long, a long, a long time ago and I put proper silver stickers on it. So it probably not erased. So uh, let's have a look. Okay, we have this uh, 2764 and it's from uh, TMS. So let's have a look. We can select here. Oh, let me just go here. And TI, it's a normal 27. I do select. I will put the read button. It says exactly how you need to put the uh, EEPROM inside. So that is good. And then we're going to read. Read. That was very fast. And yes, it indeed has data. It just says uh, starting from pin 4. It was probably easier when I put it on the board. And if I do pin 4, it just outputs 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5. And it will just be counting depending on the pin that you do up or down. Okay, cool. It's still some in, but it was very, very basic, as you can see. So that works. So that was uh, mostly about installing the software, and uh, but I think that was a good manual for that exactly. And uh, thank you guys for putting it uh, to my attention that this is actually quite nice. And also I don't need to start up my uh, Commodore 64 and have a look if uh, it still works with my other EEPROM programmer. And uh, it is super powerful as an IC tester. And uh, well, I could read uh, some of my EEPROMs. So that was nice. And uh, yeah, I, I need to check later if uh, how to program. I have not my eraser yet, so uh, I play with that later. But uh, I hope it was useful anyway. So thank you for watching and uh, I hope to see you next time.